at the honor and the pleasure for me to be here on this SU user con conference. So thank you to Jack last year. We have a visit in SU Netherlands and he invited us, my group, your study to group with me, to share this wonderful conference. So I'm an infantry um, staff officer, officer and the first 12 years of my career I'm doing this funny army staff, running in the dark, getting wet, uh, no food, no sleep. And then saw the IT guys sleeping in a hotel, going to this conference like this and say, okay, might be the better idea to change the line and so I um, become an IT security expert. I will give you a short insight in what we are doing in Germany. It's the so-called hybrid warfare. Um, I will point out some things we are dealing in, with in Germany, um, rela in the relating of the um, yes, Russian-Ukrainian uh, war. So it's a, to inform is to influence. I want to point out so uh, several points which are um, reliable to, to what we are doing the whole day. So, in 2014, we, the, the cyber war is starting between the Ukrainian government and the Ukrainian organizations and the Russian organizations. And so we have a focus on it and a reconnaissance to find out what's going on on this, this real battlefield. And so you see here, this is um, General Gersimov. He pointed out a hybrid warfare doctrine. In fact, it was no doctrine. So he pointed out it in, the, in a news magazine, uh, written down what is his understanding of hybrid warfare. On one side, it's using cyber as a weapon in the cyber battlefield. On the other side, doing all the stuff like propaganda issues and so on. And one nation in Europe is in the main focus of the Russian government, and that's Germany. So I will give you some exp examples about it. So here you see, that's a problem. The Russian government decided to get the Crimea uh, Peninsula back to Russia. So they... Um, they organized it, and so this is part, uh, becoming a part of, of Russia, and then the cyber war is starting. And so we saw a lot of indications of the brilliant Russian hacker groups, and one of the best groups we met is the so-called cyber backwards. And so you see uh, different talks about APT, advanced persistent threats, about um, hacker attacks and so on, and the main problem for us is that these are state-sponsored attacks. And difficult for us is, not for, only for the military organizations, for the law enforcement too, that cyber crime organizations in Russia are close cooperation with the Russian governments, with different hacking groups, and do, doing the hacking attacks. And it's very, very difficult for us as German armed forces to find out what's going on in reality. And so we have some funny examples. So the cyber backward group has attacked the German parliament, has attacked different ministries in Germany. So we have a lot of indications that they try uh, to come in our systems to attack governmental systems in Germany and so on. And they're doing things like this. So this is a, this is a billboard in Kiev, and they hacked this billboard and put uh, pictures from Ukrainian generals in and pointed out that these generals are war criminals. And it's a funny fact because this picture goes viral in the old social media. You find these pictures in Facebook and Instagram and so on, and they use it in the form of hybrid warfare. And so we use ESRI as a platform to find out this ongoing attacks to, to define and declare what kind of groups um, we have to, to deal with, which kind of attacks, like the APT28 group, the APT29 group, um, the Hematos tool we find in German systems, we find the APT tools uh, in attacks against uh, NATO partners, and of course we get indications and information from our colleagues from the US that, that they will be used in the United States. And this was the first time that we get an official indication that Russia attacks critical infrastructures. So we have ongoing discussions in NATO, where there's a red line if the other side is attacking critical infrastructure, then we have a, a kind of war, and the Russians did it. So this is the example. In the western part of Ukraine, they hack a power supply company, and um, so it's the first time that we saw a state-sponsored attack against critical infrastructures in another country. And talking about hacking groups, this is APT28 group, so-called fancy beers, they're doing a lot of interesting things. They hacked the German parliament, they hacked the Democratic National Committee in the US, they hacked the uh, Olympic Games, the World Anti-Doping Agency, and they were really skillful. And they have different names you see here, Postorm, Tart, Seam, Sofashi, Satnit, and so on. It's a so-called APT, Advanced Persistent Threat, it's named by, by a company in the US, as they named, and they give them the number. So the APT28 group 
And the Dukes, the APT29 group, are the most skillful hacking groups we ever saw. And here's an example. It's a funny thing. The Ukrainian artillery is using an app developed by a guy, its name is Sherstuk. They have 9,000 users, and they use the app for geolocations. What did the hackers do? They put the app in an app store with a malicious code. And so the Ukrainian artillery officers using this app with malicious code, and then they get the full geolocations of all the artillery pieces in the eastern part of Ukraine. So, and you see here 9,000 users, and though it's easy for Russia to attack the Ukrainian gun positions because they take care and they have an app, take a look in the app and they find out where's the locations of the different artillery pieces. You see here hybrid warfare has direct influence in the conventional warfare here, for example, for the artillery. And in our analyze what's going on in this country, so we have a cyber battlefield and Russians can train their hackers in the whole country to find out, to get the skills and execute different types of attacks. The new fact, I, uh, I know that you are familiar with ransomware, so ransomware to get money, so your, your PC is encrypted and you have to pay 600, 800 bucks uh, to get the encryption and then you can use your PC. And so the Russians starting to use this ransomware developed by cybercrime organizations, and so it's the best way to have distributed denial of service attacks. So for example, the so-called Petya and Saron is in use. They use this ransomware as an attack weapon. They encrypted the different uh, systems in the Ukraine here without getting any ransom, without getting, and, uh, getting any, any money. And yes, you see these um, different types of ransomware which is in use. One funny uh, aspect is, so we, we analyze the source code of the so-called Loki ransomware. And the funny fact is that Loki doesn't work in Russia, in White Russia, in Belarus, and in Romania. So if you, see this, uh, you are sitting in a conference in Moscow and having the Loki ransomware on your PC, it doesn't work. And if you come back to US or to Germany, then Loki is starting. So these are patriotic criminals. So they talk to the Russian police, so we, that didn't hack any Russian people, we only hack other people in the Western community, and that's fine. And so talking about war or cyber war, it's interesting because if, if I'm talking with, with colonels from the, from the real army and they told me you need weapons, you need infantry men, you need tanks to control the country, I said, no, no, you need IT to control the country. And there was one difficulty for Russia after getting the Krim Peninsula, because all the ISP have a direct connection to Ukraine. And so Russia has a problem because they can't control the whole, the whole Krim area with, because they have no connections. And they take a decision. And it's amazing. They started in January 2040 with a planning to lay a sea cable over the street of Kerch. And this sea cable becomes operational three months later in April. And the whole work bunch is starting in July. And if you know armed forces, not only in Germany, for example, in the US, they need only three months to lay a 46 kilometer sea cable and only two months to make it operational. This was a great deal. And so if we, we, are anal uh, we have analyzed the traffic between Ukraine and Russia, and here you see the new soft company called Marinda Media is starting and the green part of it, this is a new connection over the street of Kerch. So this was one type of hybrid warfare, this was the cyber part. The other part is this propaganda. So in Germany we started with some, with some projects, so we have digital reputation units to find out if generals, officers and so on in the Ministry of Defense has faked um, Facebook profiles, for example. One of our uh, greatest commander, General Bühler, has a, has a faked Facebook profile, was done by the Serb army, because of anti-Slavic and anti-Serb statements inside to kill his reputation. Or Admiral Stavridis, he has a fake, faked Facebook site, which was developed by the Chinese, Chinese intelligence service. So they want to find out who is in close connection to Admiral Stavridis. And in Germany, so that's, a, that's the main target is to manipulate the mass media. So we have two news magazines in German language coming from Russia, 
So one is called Sputnik, and the second is the world-famous Russia Today. You have Russia Today in the English version, in the French version, in the Spanish version, and of course in the German version. And here, the power is a picture, it's a funny picture. You see the G20 um, meeting in Hamburg, and you see Putin and all the other stars of the community, and in the background, Angela Merkel. And it's a funny fact, if you take a look on the closest Angela Merkel, you see here, this was the order of the Great Fatherland War. So they put this order on, on her closest and say, okay, she's uh, in favor for Russia. And we saw this picture goes viral in Russia. Uh, we saw it in, in uh, several news magazines and so on, and they pointed out, okay, she's a friend of Russia. And this is Russia Today. And you see here, it's nice how they use um, uh, terms, for example, family terms. So in Germany, we have uh, close connections between the German Democratic Republic and Germany. So we have the, the so-called Neue Bundesländer, new countries. And Russia today is using this term, Neue Bundesländer, for the Krim area and say, okay, it's similar to the reunion in Germany, it's the reunion, it's the Krim Peninsula, which is a Russian country. And here, this is a main news magazine in Russia. And you see some pictures. Here's a film inside. They pointed out that German tanks are in the Ukraine. And you know this relationship between Germany and Russia from the Second World War. And so they pointed out, Germany is back in Russia. And they put this picture and this film in. The funny fact is, this is the original video. This is from a, from a train training area in Germany. And the funny fact is that they're not German tanks, it's a German Leopard 2 tank, but it's belonging to the Belgian army. But they pointed out its film and its pictures and say, okay, Germany is back in the Ukraine. And you see it's several examples we find in social media, in Facebook and Instagram and so, and you see here they have another pictures from German, but this is the German Leopard 2 tank, and say, okay, we have saw this tank in the eastern part of Ukraine, and we saw this tank in Kiev, we saw this, uh, this tank in Kharkov. And this is pointed out in the main news magazine in Russia. And so, this is the end of my presentation. I want to give a short insight in what we're doing the whole day. And the main point is, so you see here, it's in Germany the same, it's called BSI. So we need rules and regulations which work. And another main point is that we, <laughs> that we have to cooperate. And so that's, that's the main point. I'm working the last 30 years in this environment. And so we have starting talking about cyber and cyber security with military organizations. Then we learn from the law enforcement that might be good to share information about the different types of attacks to find out. Is this a criminal act? Is this an, is an, is an act coming from some cyber uh, organization? Is this an act coming from an APT group and so on? And it's really important to share this information on national level and on international level. So it was, again, a great pleasure and honor for me to be here to give us a short insight on what we are doing in German armed forces, that you see that hybrid warfare, skillful hacking attacks against German IT systems, mostly against governmental systems on one side. On the other side, the Russian propaganda, the abuse of social media to point out what is Germany doing in, in the Ukraine, in Russia. So thank you again for invitation. Thank you for your um, attention. Hope you have some questions, hope an ongoing discussion the whole day. You see here a lot of people looking similar to me. This is a part of, parts of my group. You see it here as a pin. So you study to a pin. So if you have some questions, if you want to discuss with me or my, my team of experts, feel free and that's it. Thank you very much.